Good morning, buenos días, buen día. Uh, it's my pleasure to be today with all of you. My name is Begoña Nafria. I'm working at San John de Deu Children's Hospital. And uh, today uh, our uh, talk is going to speak around uh, innovation, research, and the involvement of uh, patients in a pediatric uh, hospital. Before to start uh, with this uh, presentation, I want uh, to explain a little bit uh, about San Juan de Deu Children's Hospital. Probably you know, probably don't, but this is the, the pediatric hospital of Barcelona, but also it's the largest pediatric hospital in, in Spain. For us, uh, the role of the patients and the families is crucial, and they are the main pillar of uh, any activity in our center, not only in the healthcare, also in innovation and research. This is something very innovative because usually uh, involves the patients and, and the families in, in the activities that we are going to introduce to, today to all of you. It's not very frequent. And also something that is important is that children and young people usually are forgotten about the role that they can have and about the roles that they have to participate in any decision about their health and obviously research and innovation, it's part of this uh, important area to involve children and, and families. I cannot move the slide. No, no la puedo mover la... Ahora, okay, sorry. We are going to be uh, three people here in this meeting room. Uh, me, as a representative and ambassador of San Juan de Deu Children's Hospital, my other colleagues will be here with all of you, but in a, in a video format. And also, it's my pleasure to share this uh, activity with two colleagues from the Mobile World Capital uh, Congress. This is one of the uh, partnerships that we have in our institution. We can uh, move forward with uh, many projects and, and initiatives because we work closely with companies, non-profits, and other kind of organizations. At the end, no, what uh, move us to work together is the same goal, in this case, to improve the health of children and, and young people. Today, we are going to have uh, with all of you uh, Eduard Martí. He is the CEO uh, and Smart Connectivity Director uh, at the Mobile World Capital uh, Barcelona and also uh, Xavier Jufre, Head of Innovation at the same uh, institution. The first uh, testimonial that we are going uh, to have uh, with all of you today is uh, one colleague from San Juan de Deu Children's Hospital. His name is Arnau Valls. He is one of the project managers of our innovation uh, department that he is going to introduce to all of you what we do in our institution. And it's going to highlight a uh, few projects. Some of them also we are going to talk uh, afterwards. If you can uh, share the first video. Hi, I'm Jana, and I'm 15 years old. I'm also a Kids and Barcelona ambassador. So, Arnau, my first question to you is, what is the value of innovation um, in pediatric hospitals and how is it different to that of other industries? Hi, I'm Jana and I'm 15 years old. I'm also a Kids of Barcelona ambassador. So, Arnau, my first question to you is, what is the value of innovation um, in pediatric hospitals and how is it different to that of other industries? Pediatric innovation is key. Kids are our future. However, only 24% of the FDA approved medical devices last year were meant for pediatric use. And when we look at drugs, more than 50% of prescribed drugs are off-label. That means that they are not prescribed for the main use. That's why innovation in pediatrics is so important. And hospitals take a key role on that. Hospitals is the place where all stakeholders meet. We have patients, we have families, we have practitioners, nurses, professionals, and all the industry around. So with them, with the final users, is where we can find the best unmet needs and push uh, for innovation. Could you provide some examples of innovation for pediatric patients? So when we talk about innovation in pediatrics, let me put you three examples of projects that we are working. First, one to improve patient experience. That's a project between MIT, Hyundai, and Hospital San Juan de Deu. We created a car that uh, accompany patients when they go to operating theater. 
by playing during this process, they reduce anxiety, and we can get constants and information about the health of this patient. Second, a community for very, very rare diseases. That's called share for rare That's an online community in which people and families with rare diseases can meet, and we can use those data afterwards for improving research. Third, speed therapy. Speed therapy have increased the prevalence in the last years, and that's uh, really burden uh, in terms of psychology and uh, also uh, speed therapy for those patients. Imagine that they have to come two to three times a week to the hospital. We created BLAP. BLAP is a solution that helps this patient do this rehabilitation from home by playing. So all these three projects are in the i4Kids Innovation Pediatric Hub. That's a new hub that focuses on pushing innovation in pediatrics. As you can see with the testimonial of Arnau Valls, uh, the involvement of uh, children and young people in our institution is a key element. As you can see one uh, young person making questions to Arnau Valls. This lady, this uh, young person, is member of the Kids Barcelona Young Persons Advisory Group. This is the Scientific Youth Council at San Juan de Deu Children's Hospital. We meet uh, with uh, this group of young people once per month and they are involved in the projects in which our institution is participating, providing the feedback and the needs of the young people. We really believe that it's the only way to uh, perform innovation and research centered in the needs of the, of the patients. You will see that the other interviews and testimonials that we are going to share with all of you also, other members of this Youth Council are making the questions to, to our professionals. Moving forward, uh, my colleague Arnau Valls, he has explained that we have one project with Hyundai focused in the, in the experience of uh, our patients. For us, we have also a dedicated patient experience in our hospital. It's very important to offer the best experience to the children and young people. As you can imagine, it's not uh, natural to have a disease at these ages, and we need to uh, work to reduce any kind of impact in these uh, patients. Said this, the process you know that uh, by first time that the patients need to face when they go to the surgery room can have you know, a very hard impact, and if they are very nervous, it can, it, it can affect you know, to the outcomes and, and to the process of the anesthesia. In our institution, we have more than 700 volunteers that they are helping in many activities, and one, for example, is to be with the family, with the parents and the kids, uh, before the surgery in the, in, in, in the process of the, of the anesthesia. But the, the time you know, that uh, not, uh, it's between the, the moment that you are in the room and then you arrive to the surgery room, also it's important for us. You will see now a video about this uh, project that are now mentioned, that it's a car that help us to transport the, the patients from the room to the surgery room and beyond no, to try to reduce the anxiety also, we can monitor the different vital constants of, of the patients. Next video, please. Puedes jugar ahora con el coche y cuando te encuentres mejor, vamos. Este coche ayuda a curar a los nenes y a las nenas. Y me está diciendo que quiere jugar contigo. ¿Qué te parece? ¿Vamos a jugar? ¿Sí?
una amiga. ¿Cómo estás hoy? ¿Quieres ir a dar una vuelta? ¿Qué tal si probamos las respiraciones mágicas? Te ayudaré. Inspiramos y expiramos. Oh. Inspiramos y expiramos. Oh. Huele como a caramelo, ¿verdad? Inspiremos y expiremos juntos. Vamos a dar una vuelta con música. A ver cómo eres de valiente. sientes mejor. Pulsa el botón y verás qué pasa luego. Te encuentras mal porque tus células no están bien. El doctor te va a pinchar células buenas para luchar contra las malas. Cuando tengas las células buenas en tu cuerpo, hará que las malas se vayan corriendo. Será menos de un minuto, solo un pinchazo. Eres valiente y puedes aguantarlo, ¿verdad? Sí, sí que puedo. ¡Vale! ¡Te noto súper valiente! Vamos a soplar, a ver qué magia puedes hacer. <ríe> Déjame hacerte una foto, valiente. Sonríe. Uno, dos, tres. Amiga, ¿cómo estás ahora? Vale, vamos a la consulta. Allá vamos. The key technology of this project is called Emotion Adaptive Vehicle Control Technology, which enables to read driver's emotion to provide the best environment with the help of artificial intelligence. When a child is going to a treatment room, the car will read child's emotion and physical signs such as pulse, respiration, skin impedance, and provide the best environment to reduce stress and anxiety. The hospital is very excited to have, to have such a technology available for kids that will change probably a, uh, dramatically the way patients will face treatment. This is a very nice example about no, how with innovation we can improve the experience of our patients. In the innovation department at San Juan de Deu Children's Hospital, uh, there are many colleagues working from different areas of expertise, engineers, designers, uh, and obviously 
We work with a very, very strong partnership with our medical uh, departments, with the doctors and, and the different nurses. When we talk about uh, pediatrics and innovation and research, I have said at the very beginning of my talk that usually children and young people are uh, forgotten because it's anti natura to suffer uh, conditions. Something that we need to face when we talk about medicines is that still no, the research that we have is uh, very limited. 50% of the treatments that we prescribe for, for children have not been studied with this population. And when we talk about uh, neonates, it's 90%. It means that we need to work together with the different stakeholders to increase the research in pediatrics. And also there are conditions that only suffer the children. In our hospital, we have a dedicated uh, unit to perform clinical trials. And the next testimonial is from Joanna Claverol. He, she is the chief of this department, and she is going to be interviewed also by one representative of Kids Barcelona explaining how it's uh, important to uh, perform uh, research in pediatrics in the clinical uh, field. Next video, please. Hello, I'm Jan and I'm 16 years old. I'm a Kids Barcelona ambassador. Joana, my first question to you is, can you define the model of the clinical research unit of San Juan de Deus Children's Hospital? The Clinical Research Unit of San Juan de Deo Hospital is a centralized unit that provides support to all the researchers to develop pediatric clinical trials. It's like a one-stop shop model with more than 30 professionals fully devoted to the development of these clinical trials. We provide support uh, for the startup, we provide support for the coordination of all the activities with a big team of research nurses that provide support to the researchers and that are the main contact for the families, for the sponsors and for the investigators. What are the areas of expertise of the second and first trial units at St. Juan de Deus Children's Hospital? We have different leading areas in the clinical trials unit where we perform clinical trials. The first one is oncology. We have more than 40 active clinical trials with different pediatric diseases in the oncology field. We also have neurology as the second main area. In neurology, we have different trials in neuromuscular diseases and also in neurometabolic diseases. And then we have a big third group of diseases where we include rheumatology, cardiology, dermatology and many other diseases. In most cases, these are innovative drugs that have been developed for pediatric diseases. In other cases, we are performing clinical trials with different drugs that have been developed already for adults and now they are seeking the indication for the pediatric field. We also have innovative drugs, particularly in oncology and neurology, that are gene therapy and advanced therapies. What are the main differences between performing clinical trials with children and adult patients? Pediatric clinical trials are different than adult trials. First of all, the trial affects the family. The patient is not coming by his or her own to the hospital, so parents are affected by the clinical trials schedule. Secondly, the formulations. Formulations should be adapted to the different pediatric ages. We see patients that are newborns and patients that are adolescents, so formulations should be adapted to the different range of ages that we see in the pediatric setting. Third issue is the ethical concerns. Also, the patients participate in the informed consent process. So legal guardians provide the informed consent, but also the patients when they are 12 or greater than 12. And last but not least, patients are growing. So the drugs should consider the different moments of growth of these patients because pharmacokinetics or pharmacodynamics can be affected for the different maturation of the kids. Basically, in pediatrics, we work with uh, rare diseases. It means that in one hospital, we have a very, very small number of patients. This is a very important limitation to perform research. What we have done at San Juan de Deu Children's Hospital is to build, to build a, a digital platform to facilitate the involvement of uh, patients and, and families that are interested to support research, donating uh, clinical information. Through this platform, we can involve uh, patients and families, obviously from Spain, but from abroad, building uh, meaningful samples of patients that help our researchers to move forward in projects about uh, rare conditions. 
This project has been granted by the European Commission. The name is uh, Share for Rare. And in the next video, we will explain to all of you how it works. In Europe alone, over 30 million people are affected by rare diseases. 80% of them are children. Often these patients and their families face daily challenges alone and with limited information. Realizing one is not alone in the struggle can lighten the burden. Share for Air is a collaborative project where everyone matters. Patients, carers, researchers, clinicians, each with a unique perspective and valuable insights, which we explore and capture using surveys designed by experts. Our goal is to bring everyone together on a global platform to advance research in rare diseases. That is why our patients and carers play a crucial part in our research projects. Their expertise is our guideline. We strongly believe that collective intelligence can lead to solid advancements over individual efforts. Share for Air is an online safe space to connect, share knowledge and support each other. Users from over 50 countries are already active on our global forum and interact with each other. We look for similarities to connect patients and families living with rare diseases. This could be a shared condition, similar symptoms, or because they live in the same country. Share for Air uses artificial intelligence and bespoke algorithms to build meaningful connections from the information users provide. Because nobody should be in this alone. Quality information is vital and unfortunately, for many rare diseases, it is often in short supply. Our teams of experts, doctors and patients publish blogs and medical chapters to disseminate knowledge and expertise. Share for Air is designed to facilitate research to build new knowledge and understanding by engaging with patients directly. In turn, the fruits of this research will be shared through the platform. From specific symptoms to cross-cutting issues, we want to share what we know. And we want to keep learning so we can also share what we find out. Our ambition is to make sharing as easy as possible so that patients can benefit. Together, we can make a difference in rare diseases. Get on board! 80% of the clinical trials that we perform in, in our hospital I, are sponsored by pharma companies. For us, it, this is another important partnership for clinical research because, you know, they are the ones that uh, have no, the capability to uh, perform basic research and to move forward with phase one uh, clinical trials. But uh, in this field, what we need also to face is uh, that these studies need to be uh, designed for this target population. If you know the, the European context in which clinical trials are, are performed, when the condition exists uh, in the adult uh, setting, it's mandatory to perform a pediatric investigational plan. It means that we need no, to, to perform the same study with the pediatric population. But the same study is challenging because children are not small adults. As my colleague from the clinical trials unit said, we need no, to consider that it's not only the child who is involved in the study, it's also the, the whole family. What we pretend to do in the, in the clinical trials, it's involve the children, the young people, and also the parents in the design phase of the protocol, because it's the right moment where we can change and adapt the design and obviously perform studies that can be uh, meaningful, that can move forward, that can be feasible for this uh, target population. And we do these activities from the Patients Engagement in Research Department, that it's my pleasure to be, to be the coordinator of uh, this department, working very closely with the sponsors and academic institutions behind these studies, helping them to achieve no, this pediatric uh, design of clinical trials, and also involving the patients along the whole process, because when the study is finished, it's mandatory to get no, uh, in, a, in a public uh, way to the society the outcome of these studies. The next video is a testimonial that summarizes how we involve the patients in clinical trials. We have different kind of methodologies and one that is quite innovative in this field is simulation because with simulation we can anticipate before to move to the real world anything that needs to be adjusted or improved of these projects. Next video, please. The benefits of involving children and young people in clinical trials. 
Why is it important to involve children and young people in drug development? There are many diseases that have their onset in the pediatric age. In fact, some diseases only occur in the pediatric population. Clinical research should also focus in pediatrics because children are not little adults. And this research should also consider patients' and families' needs. As children and young people, we represent 21% of the European population. That means we are the future for a healthy society. Talking about health, it is important to highlight that as children and young people, we have rights. One that is especially important is the right to be involved and express our views and opinions on anything that concerns our health. We also have the right to be involved in health research. We can be research partners for your projects. Now, let's learn more about pediatric-centric clinical trials. With any activity involving the patients, it is essential to consider these key points. Transparency and objectivity in informing the patients. The special needs of children and young people. Provide suitable means for the involvement. Respect ethics principles and the rights of the children. Make sure there is no conflict of interest. Compensation and reimbursement. Choose the best methodology for the minors. When involve children and young people? Children and young people can be involved along the drug development process. They deserve the same opportunities than the adult patients. As soon as we can involve them, the better. In this sense, we can involve them in discussions about the unmet medical needs and the protocol design. Another important area in which we can involve children and young people is the one related to the information that we give to the participants of the clinical trial. In this sense, we can involve children and young people in the revision of the patient information sheet and the informed consent. And last but not least, in the revision of the life summaries to ensure that the information related to the outcomes of the clinical trial is understood by the public. There are many different means for involving minors in clinical studies. Focus group, questionnaires, interviews, patient journey. Advisory board, steering committees, simulation. Clinical simulation is a very innovative methodology in the field of clinical trials. Uh, with clinical simulation, we can replicate real world, narrowing the gap between work as imaging and work as done. In a simulation activity, we put together doctors, nurses, patients and families for really doing the tasks. When we approach a simulation project, experts in simulation can analyze the protocol of a clinical trial and advice where simulation can be the best method for involving patients. For example, we can simulate uh, important visits, moments of the trial. Uh, we can simulate procedures, complex procedures, or for example, the impact in patient experience and families of a decentralized uh, trial. The outcome of simulation in clinical trials can be very valuable. For example, for preventing uh, future potential amendments, improving the training of people, uh, improving the materials and resources, for example, educational materials for patients and families. Case study, pediatric patients' involvement in a clinical trial for a rare blood disorder. We found several areas of involving patients and parents into a simulation process. First of all, we did a group of parents who revised uh, some specific areas of the clinical uh, trial protocol. We learned a lot about that. After that, we did a simulation of the baseline visit, the administration of medication at home, and the PK process with a nurse at home. From my point of view, from the medical point of view, this is a high value method to learn and improve our work always having in mind to offer the best experience for our patients. When you need to decide about your child's participation in a clinical trial, you need a lot of information. You need to consider how this is going 
to impact in your child and the family life. I had the opportunity to participate in a parents panel and in simulation activity. I know that these activities are important to incorporate the patients and family needs and preference in a clinical trial. Now that you can help uh, for a better experience of the patients and parents that will participate in a clinical trial is very rewarding. Thank you for this opportunity. During the group discussion of the SIM test, parents and young patients make comments and suggestions to limit the study burden on the children and their families and to support their engagement along the study. There were meaningful insights that the study team has translated into procedures flexibility with visiting nurses, treatment at home and possible, and information on the study with the development of patient-facing material. I think there is much to learn from such interactions, which can help to better adapt clinical studies to the specificities of young patients without omitting the involvement of their relatives. Nothing for the patients without the patients. last sentence, nothing for the patients without the patients, it's the main claim of the advocacy movement around the world and for us it's no, our uh, claim also, our uh, no, uh, goal to be sure that no, we cannot perform any project for, for the patients without considering uh, their involvement. Said this, pediatric clinical research, you know that it's a multi-country uh, usually initiative in rare diseases, sometimes there is one hospital or two per country performing the same clinical trial. And there are many factors beyond the, the condition of the patients and the families that participate in a clinical study that we need to consider. There are, you know, cultural elements and many other uh, aspects regarding the diversity of the patients that finally will participate in this clinical study. Considering this, in 2017, from San Juan de Deu Children's Hospital, we founded with other uh, three pediatric hospitals across Europe, a YPAC net. This is the European Young Persons Advisory Group uh, Network that has the recognition of the European Medicines Agency. We work together with other pediatric hospitals. At this moment, more than 20 groups uh, like Kids Barcelona uh, already exist at the European level. There are also groups in US, Canada, Japan, Africa, and many other areas of the world that we work together to be sure that this diversity in clinical research is considered in any advocacy and patients' uh, involvement activity. Said this, the next video has two testimonials from two colleagues. One is from the uh, pediatric hospital of uh, Lyon in France, and the other is from another colleague from uh, the Aberdeen Hospital in, in Scotland. They are part of this network and together we work to guarantee the involvement of the patients and something that for us it's very important to guarantee the rights of the children and the young people. Because in uh, 1989, the United Nations and also UNICEF, they published the Convention of the Rights of the Children. And I have said at the very beginning of this talk, Children, they have the right, obviously, to deserve the best care, the best health care, but also they have the right to have an active voice in any decision that matters their health. And in this sense, be part of a clinical trial. If you are, uh, in, in the case of Spain, 12 years old, it's part of the decision-making process with your parents to say if you agree or not to be part of any research initiative. Having this on mind and to guarantee the rights of uh, the children and the young people, a YPAC net is working with many initiatives. One that for me is very important is the training and the education of the children and young people because schools, or in this case uh, high schools, are not providing information about uh, this. And now that we are living in the COVID-19, usually you know, the general society, they know about clinical trials, but two years ago this uh, word was, you know, very uh, naive 
from the general uh, population. Said this, we work also in the awareness because I have mentioned it's very important to increase research in pediatrics and many other initiatives. But listen, my colleagues, that they will explain a little uh, better than me how we work together at the European level with these groups of young, of young people. So why is it important to involve children and young people into clinical research? Um, first of all, it's a right uh, for children to be involved in uh, health matters that uh, affect them. Um, so clinical research is one of uh, their health matters. And uh, for them, being involved differently, uh, not only as a participant, but maybe taking part in the uh, design of the protocol, etc., uh, can certainly uh, also benefit them and benefit uh, the population uh, that is affected. Um, young people have also different expectations, so I think uh, listening to them is very important to take into account what they have to say. Uh, they are complementary to uh, what uh, researchers, companies, and uh, other academics can think. Um, what else involving uh, young people who are the principal object of the pre clinical research could have really a positive impact on your research, and it has been demonstrated in, uh, in adult patients, but uh, can be seen also uh, already uh, when you involve young people. Uh, that uh, your research could be more relevant uh, by uh, improving the feasibility, the quality, and the expectations uh, of young people. If there is a pediatric hospital interested to create a YPAG, how can we support it from a YPAGnet? Um, so, just a YPAGnet provides researchers with a range of opportunities uh, to, uh, to work with children and young people so in uh, in protocols and in health research. So what the white bag net is giving is a network and a place uh, for different white bags, uh, young ones, older ones, uh, all coming with their own experiences, expertises. So and the idea of the network is really to share all those expertises and being a member would be sharing expertises, sharing experiences among the network. So definitely we can help you uh, with training, consulting, training of what is PPI, what it is to uh, concretely and definitely create a white bag. How do you start? What do you do? What are the regulatory and things like this that you need to know, etc. So we can help you in that. An easy thing, you just need to uh, call us or uh, check our website and we will be very happy to help you. And you will see that it's uh, so fantastic uh, to uh, experience uh, working with children and especially listening to their voice into clinical research. What kind of projects can you take to EY Pagnet? The EY Pagnet is a community of different young persons and advocacy groups across Europe. So any project you would normally take to a local young, young persons group like reviewing your patient documentation and looking at a protocol or looking at the endpoints and the relevance to children, you can approach EY Pagnet and get the same type of feedback but from different YPAGs across Europe. This for you're looking or you're approaching children with different cultures, different first languages and different experiences, giving you a much broader um, response. What EY Pagnet will do for you is we'll coordinate that response and you will have one report from all the different young persons advocacy groups. How else can EY Pagnet support you? Well, on our website, we've got a real lot of really good, valuable information. There's also a free toolkit. In that toolkit, there's examples and practical ways of how to engage with young people, of the type of information that you might want to bring to a young person's advocacy group, and how to work with them, and working with EAM as all as adults collaboratively, but also working with the young people to get the best feedback you can for your project. The website of our network is uh, www.eypangnet.eu. 
And now let's, uh, let's move to uh, technology because as you have seen no, with the previous example, technology is crucial for innovation in our hospital. We are very proud to have a partnership with the Mobile World Capital Congress and now my, my colleague uh, Xavier Joffre from this institution will explain uh, a couple of projects that recently we have done together. Firstly, thank you, Begoña, for giving me the opportunity to explain these projects. Bon dia, good morning. First of all, many thanks for attending to this event. It's a pleasure. Below, I explain, I explain in you two of the most uh, relevant projects that we showed during the past edition of the MWC, held it here in Barcelona. Firstly, Firstly, is the first project is called 5G Transatlantic Lab. This event consists in a hackathon connecting two, two cities and two hospitals. In this case, it was connect Barcelona and Boston with Hospital San Juan de Deo and Boston Children's Hospital. What is 5G Transatlantic Lab? The, this project was created by Mobile World Capital Barcelona, Hospital San Juan de Deo, Boston Children's Hospital, Garage Stories, and also Cisco and IBM as a technological partners to explore the potential of, uh, of 5G and new technologies on applied to pediatric patient healthcare. Our main goal, basically, was to foster new connections between creatives, humanists, technologies based in Barcelona and Boston to develop innovative projects that can reduce the negative impact of long-term pediatric patients, also in families experience at the hospital. In short, make children stay at the hospital as enjoyable and less traumatic as possible. The challenge was focused on patients between the age of 12 and 17 years old, and the teams can, could choose from five principal themes, socialization, mental health, education, entertainment, and family life. In this initiative, there were more 200 participants who formed mixed groups between Barcelona and Boston, and more than 50 projects were, more than 50 solutions were presented. A large part of the, su the success of the initiative was down to the teamwork. Receiving help from the young patients, for example, kids program for, for, from Hospital San Juan de Deu, and international mentors and speakers. Also, during the two weeks, Prior to the hackathon, a program of activities was set up especially designed for the, for the participants with internationally experts, research innovators, such as IoT, big data, etc., from different companies like Google, uh, MIT from Boston, New York University, and Harvard University. Below, uh, you can see the, the video. It's a summary of the projects were two, called Boostboard and Squishy. Both projects will be implemented in the real environment hospitals, such as uh, Hospital San Juan de Deu and Boston Children's Hospital during the coming year. About Boostboard, Boostboard motivates kids to connect with hospital peers by sharing positive messages through augmented reality. Boostboard aims to encourage social interaction in hospital so as to improve the mood of the patients. 
faced with situation that reduce the mobility, that, uh, such as reduced mobility or risk of the infection. The so how does it work, Boosboard? Boosboard is, so is a solution that uses augmented reality to allow patients a change in, inter in interactive message and contents, such as visual, uh, visual video and games, and generate uh, leisure space through the, through the, the maids. The contents of the, first, of the first prototype will be designed uh, in collaboration with real, with real patients. Last, last but not least, the second winner was a Squishy. Squishy, we can brief a Squishy in a short sentence. Patients' connection to the outside world. Squishy aims to help patients with, uh, continue with their life outside the hospital. Allow patients in the hospital to experience their homes, classroom, hangouts, and events with friends and family in the comfort of their hospital. How does it work, a Squishy? Using a 360 degrees camera, which thanks to sensor, detects and transmits emotions. The patient's family and friends will be able to create a real-time experience so that the patient can experience firsthand of the situation they miss a lot in the hospital, such as family meals, uh, friend trips, etc. Patient, uh, the patient connects with her family uh, or friends in real time using a VR headset or some, de or some device, such as, for example, smartphones, tablets, or computers. And family and friends connect with the patients using a squishy. The second pilot that we showed during the last MLA you see was 5G meriting emergencies. In this pilot, we will see how 5G improve medical care, in this case at sea or in remote zones. This, uh, this pilot was powered by Mobile World Capital through the 5G initiative, Hospital San Juan de Deu, uh, SEM, or Medical Emergency Systems, Vodafone, Port of Barcelona, and Maritime, and Maritime Safety and Rescue Society called SASEMAR, with the collaborations of Philips and Biotronic as a technological partner, as also the support of the Generalitat of Catalonia. The storyline of this project. A minor suffering from a cardiac emergency on a vessel close to the Port of Barcelona is simulated. The child is fitted with a subcutaneous pediatric device which sends an alert to SEM when it detects an anomaly in their heart rhythm. Thanks to this, this warning, SEM can activate the protocol. Also, in parallel, the alert goes to the cardiology department. Whoa. What happened? Ah, okay. Also, in parallel, the alert goes to the cardiology department of, hospital San Juan, of the hospital, who call the family to get first-hand information in order to know the situation. And it exam examines the device remotely and on confirming the gravity of the situation, request to send to activate all the protocol. No pasa? Oh. Okay. On the same pediatric ambulance reached to the port, is taken to the boat with uh, SASEMAR to provide care, same contacts to Hospital San Juan de Deu, using a high resolution 5G enabled tablet, transmitting in real time all the information and the data. And, man uh, and this can, pro can, can, uh, can provide to manage and stabilize the patient. Subsequently, with a 5G enabled mobile, an echocardiography is conducted as to, as, as to assess their condition in greater detail. The child, finally, the child, then moved to Sassamar vessel, returning to, to the port, then on Stolan, they cared in the pediatric ambulance and taken to the hospital. And following, you will see the video where we, where we explain deeply the, all the project.
Finally, in both projects, we have seen why is important the technology in health sector and how can it help patients to get, to get a better life. So we should aware that the current situation means that now more than ever, the contribution of all actors is key to overcoming the crisis, a crisis that requires a focus on health. This sector has been subjected to unprecedented levels of stress that have demonstrated the limits of the structures in many countries. Throughout this process, technology will be an indispensable tool for scientists and healthcare workers and entrepreneurs, among others, so as to keep providing other differential value. Technology offers new possibilities for, for the health sector. Two of the, most, uh, of the most obvious examples possible thanks to 5G are, sorry, Sorry. Two of the most, uh, most obvious examples, thanks to 5G, are the, the improvement of the management of medical, of the medical emergencies and connected operati operating theaters that allow sharing the knowledge between uh, medical centers and, do and, and specialists from other countries. And finally, talking about inno innovation, I always like to close the presentations in the, uh, with a quote. In this case, with a quote from a famous person, that is by Thomas Edison, is the value of an idea lies in the using of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you so much. Let's move forward now with an, uh, another testimonial. It's from uh, Dr. Elizabeth uh, Esteban. She is part of the uh, simulation department and also she was involved in this uh, experience that Xavier has explained about the, emer the maritime emergency uh, project. And she will explain no, about the importance of the use of technology in these uh, case studies. Hello, I'm Jordi, I'm 16 years old. I'm a Kids Barcelona ambassador. Elizabeth, our first question for you is, which are the lessons learned about the project 5G Maritime Emergencies? This simulation was a challenge for our team in terms of logistics and coordination. And the two main learning points uh, of this experience, the 5G Maritime Emergencies, were by one hand, the 5G technology uh, is useful to have a remote control of uh, a life threatening condition such as an arrhythmia in real time and for us it's very important these two words real time because we can provide the adequate treatment in the perfect moment and by the other hand we have a strong pediatric transport team and we tested how the communication between the hospital and the coordination center and the pediatric transport team was perfect and that we can provide the adequate treatment for any patient wherever the patient is, even if he is in the uh, middle of the Mediterranean. Hello, I'm Julia, I'm 20 years old. I'm a Kids Barcelona ambassador, and my question for you is, how important is to involve uh, patients in simulation activities? This is a nice question. This simulation is inspired by a real experience of a family that we treat in our hospital. And this family was involved in the design of the simulation. For our uh, simulation staff and for our actors, uh, it was really, really powerful to be able to know the feelings and the concerns of this family. And it allowed us to create a real atmosphere. It has been a very satisfactory uh, experience for both for the medical staff and both for family. And we are sure that we will repeat. Hello, I'm Miriam and I'm 20 years old. I am a Kids Barcelona ambassador. Elizabeth, my question to you is, which is the potential of technology in the management of emergency situations? Thank you. In emergency, we say that time saves lives. In this case, our patient had a device that alarmed the family and the doctor that something is going wrong. And this is very useful because we can treat sooner. And the sooner we treat, the higher is the survival rate. Speed is very important in emergencies and all kind of technology is always welcome. 
Another area in which we implement uh, technology is in the 3D printing. This is very useful for us to train our professionals, but also to uh, design specific uh, devices for, for our patients. Our next testimonial is Marta Ayats from our 3D printing department that she's going to explain to all of you which are the areas in which we implement this uh, technology. Hello, I'm Julian, I'm 16 years old, and I'm a Kids Barcelona ambassador. Marta, our first question to you is which is the added value for a pediatric hospital to have a dedicated unit of 3D printing. So being able to have a 3D printing unit inside the hospital has many benefits, not only for pediatric hospitals, but also for adults one. One of the main benefits of 3D printing is personalization that has an impact on quality and patient's experience. More specifically, in surgical intervention, being able to simulate 3D print and practice the intervention before actually doing it has a benefit, uh, an impact on surgical uh, time reduction. Um, this affects directly to patient health due to anesthesia uh, time reduction. Hello, I'm Nacho, I'm 15 years old and I'm a Kids Barcelona ambassador. I have one question to you. What is the impact of 3D printing models in the care of pediatric patients? 3D printing models are basically used for surgical practice. Um, not only for the surgeon to practice the surgery, but also to teach new residents on different surgical techniques. One of the other um, utilities of 3D printing models is to explain the patient and the family the intervention. Um, by explaining the intervention using a physical 3D printing model, we are able to explain ourselves better and also to make sure that the patient is understanding the surgical intervention or the procedure itself. So this is having a huge impact on uh, patient experience. My second and last question is, how do you envision the future applications of 3D printing in the pediatric settings? One of the most promising lines of research related to 3D printing is bioprinting. Many hospitals and research centers are working on developing this technology. So being able to 3D print tissues or organs, in fact, will have a great impact not only in pediatric health, but also in general health. And our last testimonial is from our international patient uh, department. As you can imagine, no, I have uh, said to all of you that we work in pediatric conditions, in collaborative projects, and we have also patients coming from other countries around all the world, and we have a dedicated department to support them. Some of them uh, arrive through their uh, healthcare systems, other they arrive through private uh, you know, insurance companies, but also we are very proud to work with uh, non-profit organizations that they help the families that they can support uh, the treatment or the access to a specific uh, medical trials in, in our hospital. This last testimonial is going to explain to all of you how uh, this department uh, works. Hi, my name is Lydia. I'm a Kids Barcelona ambassador. So my first question to you is, can you explain the areas of expertise of the International Patient Department at Sant Joan de Déu? We have more than 35 professionals in working in our um, international department in the area of patient and case management, um, a general administration, um, pediatric medical advice, accounting and billing, a market specialist with um, covering the um, capability, language capability of Spanish, English, Chinese, Russian, Arabic, and French, Italian. Uh, we focus on offering uh, the comprehensive solutions to the families with a severe disease abroad. And there are mainly two kinds of services that we provide in our department, medical and non-medical assistance. For the medical, we have our whole hospital medical team to, uh, to be our, our go-to expertise to seek the professional uh, medical advices and proposals for all complex and rare diseases for the pregnant mom and also the children under the 18 years old. For the non-medical part, we basically assist all the family needs, ranging from a medical report translation, visa application, um, accommodation, transportation, destination settling, and cultural orientations as well in some cases. Do you work closely with hospitals from all over the world? 
One of the very important and also I think very unique aspects that we have been practicing in our hospital is to keep the contact with the other children's hospitals worldwide. On an individual patient level, we facilitate our medical team to talk to the physicians in the home, in patient home country to have a more in-depth conversation to discuss about the diseases from the diagnose to the treatment protocol and sometimes even down to the detail of the drug dosage and injection time. This can be extremely helpful for those diseases like oncology and hematology because there is a very long um, treatment period and there are many, there could be many um, relapse um, progresses and changes in the middle of the treatment. Um, we have seen the success of finding the best clinical moment to bring the patient to our center just by keeping the contact between the home country physician and our physician. This also in the same time without question contributes to the highest possible survival rate to our children patient. We have been very happy to see that result and we are working on that and we will continue to improve on that. On the other general level between hospitals we do academic exchange webinars, online and offline physician fellowship training, um, faculty to faculty dialogues and we have um, different disease seminars um, so on and so forth. Um, we always believe the, the, the brilliant idea will only come out with the tireless communication. Um, we not not limited to the hospitals, but we also work with many, many ch um, charity organizations worldwide. We bring the kids to, uh, from those low medical resources countries to us for surgery and treatment. Um, we often uh, send out our physicians abroad uh, to help those patients who do not have the mobility to travel overseas and we travel to them. So all kinds of different uh, levels of uh, collaborations that are taking place in our hospital. How international patients are involved in clinical trials? Moving on to the clinical side, clinical trial, um, as one of the very important referral centers in Europe for maternity and children diseases, we have over 100 active clinical trials ongoing in our center. Some of them only open for the patients from Spain in Europe, but most of them are open for the international recruitment. Without mentioning the details, um, started from 2017 uh, with one of the breakthrough immunotherapy for one of the um, children's solid tumor, our center has successfully recruited over hundreds of patients come to us to participate in this cl uh, clinical trial. And thanks to our professional medical team, and thanks to our patient um, trust, um, our positive data has helped FDA accelerate, accelerate the FDA approval the end of last year, which is a very successful global collaboration in the clinical trial se uh, sector that we have the common ultimate goal to bring the promising treatment and drugs available in the market as soon as we can uh, with the most affordable price uh, to the patient families. I really cannot think of anything better than that. Another example I want to uh, highlight to you here is about the children eye cancer diseases. Um, we offer those um, patients come to us in our center to participate in the clinical trial with advanced oncolytic virus treatment whenever their home country physicians, ophthalmologists are thinking there's nothing they can do but to remove eyes. So we offer this collaboration and we are hoping we, we give those children one last chance to save their eyes and visions. But for us, we have the hope to move this research project forward to another clinical trial level. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, good morning. Buen día, buenos días. Let me, uh, first of all, let me to thank your assistance in this ex excellent session. Thank you, Begonia Nafria, for your organization for to preparing all these videos, all these use cases, really, really important for us. Um, my name is Eduard Martin Lineros. I am the CIO and the uh, connecti uh, intelligent connectivity di director at Mobile World Capital. And first of all, I want to let me you present. Okay, uh, what is uh, my job uh, on the Mobile World Capital Foundation? Uh, we don't uh, organize the Mobile World Congress. <laughs> okay, the Mobile World Congress is organized by GCM. GCM is a board member of our foundation. We are uh, a public-private foundation. The main the main board members of our foundation are the government of Spain, the Catalonian government, and the Barcelona City Council. 
our main mission, our main objectives is to make Barcelona, Catalonia and Spain one of the mo more, uh, most important digital hubs in, in, the, in the Europe and perhaps in the world. We are working very hard to promote the, te the disrupted technological advances, apply in Barcelona and Catalonia in, the, in different verticals in different sectors, especially in the health sector that is very important for our city and for our country. Uh, the members of, the other members of, of our board are the FIRA Barcelona and GCMA, of course, and we, and we have also different private members uh, as uh, Vodafone, Movistar, Orange, the three most important teleoperators tele of communications in, in Spain, and also Cachaban and Dam. We are working together with different institutions, different social, the social people, different acts in the city and in the country to, to make possible the dream of the, the, the application of technology to improve the quality of life of the, of the people. For this, we developed four programs at this moment. The first program is related to the innovation. We are promoting the technological transfer for the, from the universities and academy to the companies. It's very difficult to, to, create, com, to create new companies based on the knowledge of the universities, and we are working to, 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 to get this this, uh, this uh, fact. In this case, uh, our program, the Collider, uh, uh, built in the past more than uh, 10 new companies based on in disruptive technologies, and also more of them are related to health uh, sector. The second area of interest for us is the technologies. I am the director of this, this area. We are working with intelligent connectivity, and especially we are working with the new 5G network. Uh, as you see in the next slides, I talk about the application of the 5G in general and also specifically in the health, health sector that uh, we are, uh, we are uh, working together with, with San Juan de Deu in promoting this technology applied to the health sector. For this, we have an important initiative, 5G Barcelona, in the in the last three years, we developed more than 20 projects related to 5G technology in Barcelona and Catalonia in different areas. And one of them uh, was very important because it was the first uh, remote uh, um, surgery operation with a clinical hospital in, in 2019 that we are working uh, with a lot of projects related to the health sector. The third uh, area, the, the third area is talent. For to do it, to do all all this work, we need in Barcelona a lot of talent related to digital, uh, to digital solutions. We need a lot of developers, a lot of new people working for the new technologies in in in, in this area, and we are promoting the creation of talent the reskilling of uh, professionals, the upskilling of professionals to apply uh, their knowledge in the new technologies applied also for different verticals. And at the end, we, we have a program related to society. All this application of the new technology need a, a very important thing about the uh, ethical uh, problems or the um, breaking uh, or the uh, breaking digitals, and we have this program uh, developing this this idea. But uh, now I want to talk about my <laughs> my area of interest. That is uh, my job. No? I am dedicated uh, to develop in Spain and in Barcelona specifically the new intelligent connectivity, especially 5G. What is 5G? 5G is a big jump. It's a big jump from the older technologies, especially uh, related to the 4G technology that, that you are using in Barcelona, for example, uh, 4G technology, to the new technology 5G. It's a big jump because introduce, introduce disrupted uh, innovations in all the areas of the uh, same network. Uh, in, in the core of the network, we have a lot of new uh, proposals. Uh, as a, one example is the distribute architecture of the, of the network. We are uh, using with 5G a new architecture of the antennas, of the reservoirs, and 
in general of the management of the of the network. The introduction of the computation in the management of the same network uh, make possible new services, new digital services. And also is a big jump for the users. Uh, with the 5G, we will we will can see a new a new uh, services, new digital services based on, for example, big data, intelligence, artificial intelligence, or virtual reality, for example. With uh, 2G generation, we introduce in the past the use of the text in your phones. You know, the introduction of the ECMS services. Uh, then it was a, a very useful new services that developed in the past new business. With 3G, you change your old phone for a new device. One smartphone, a smartphone, smartphone is not a phone, it's a little general purpose computer in your pocket. This is a very, very different device in comparison with a traditional phone. With the, this new device, we can see how the people can uh, could, uh, surf the web, could receive and send emails in, uh, from your pocket, from their, uh, their pockets, and for, for example, the introduction of the new generation of, of application, the apps, new business, new opportunities for the society. With 4G, we saw how the media and entertainment comes into our pockets, into our uh, smartphones, the generation of the new platforms like, like Netflix, the social networks, or perhaps the different packs of force for songs. With 5G, we will see new and unknown services now. Uh, 5G, uh, 5G is a big jump because they have three basic characteristics that apply to different sectors and verticals are very important for the develop new business. The first one is the possibility to have real-time applications, low latency. Now we are uh, using applications that in mobile networks that don't, don't use the real-time and low latency. But we need the real-time and low latency, for example, to make a remote surgeon operation from one hospital to another hospital, we need to have the real time. We need the real time to have uh, the autonomous mobility, not only of the, with the cars, if not with the, with the railways in, in, the, in the area of the railways. The second uh, basic characteristic is a half mobile world ban, the capacity to increase uh, the the speed of the communications and increase the capacity of the networks to send, for example, video in high uh, resolution. Uh, also, for the health sector, is, need, is needed the high resolution in video to examine, for example, different tests. Okay? The three basic characteristics is the massive IoT, hyperconnectivity. With the actual uh, 4G networks, we can have 1,000 of devices connected at the same time in one antenna, for example. But when, when we have a lot of devices connected in the same antenna, we have a poor performance of the, of the network, you know, is, is obvious. With 5G, we could have uh, more than one million of devices connected at the same time with the same conditions in, in a kilometer per square. This is a, an, a very high number of devices connected that allow us to create new services, for example, in industry, or for example, to get the, the possibility to connect the devices, and not only with the antennas, if not within them. The new uh, 5G network allows to the connection of devices in machine-to-machine uh, -machine connections. It's very important, for example, to the um, remote operation or remote um, remote operation or, for example, to organize the, the, the management of, uh, of, the, of the network. Three basic characteristics that allow to build a lot of different services in different areas. Some services using, using or need uh, one of the, these characters, for example, the hyperconnectivity, for example, in industry, or uh, other services uh, need uh, real-time, for example, autonomous vehicle, and other services uh, need uh, 
has a mo mobile web band, for example, the retransmission on video in high quality. But more of them need the three characteristics at the same time. For example, in the health area, the emergency services like Xavi explained it in the, in the example of the maritime, uh, marit uh, maritime pilot. Two big uh, technical changes uh, for the technological people if, it, if here <laughs> some, somebody technological. One of them is the network slicing, the capacity to divide the total amount of my, my broadband in little slices dedicated to specific services. Imagine that do, you need the uh, um, remotely uh, management, the operation of Apache, for example, or the monitorization of, Apa of Apache in remote, you can assign a slice to this service and be sure that this service is a real uh, service for, for, for the systems. Network slicing and edge computing, the capacity to, to put close to the people, to the end user, all the capacities of the network. This is a different and uh, different disposition of the element of the network. Now we are using the cloud, the cloud, the big cloud, but now with 5G technology, we can divide this cloud in these different little clouds close to the, to the end user. This is, uh, this is make possible, for example, the autonomous car, or this uh, make possible, for, ex for example, the combination machine to machine. So it's in the health sector. What is the current scenario? The current scenario is, is obviously uh, um, technology are applied in the health sector massively uh, during the last years. The use of data, data, big data, for different systems in the health sector is, is very useful now. But uh, the, the use of the big data, for example, the use of the artificial intelligence, or the use of new devices, the medical IoT devices, needing uh, some um, specific characteristics. Need solid infrastructures, 5G can provide uh, to the services solid infrastructure, continuous connectivity, we, have, we, we want and we uh, need to provide continuous connectivity, for example, for the uh, monitorization of patent, uh, re remote monitorization of patent. We need to uh, have optimal resources, need for a lot of experts in these new uh, possibilities, need to increase operational accuracy, data management, and real-time remote monitoring. This is the actual situation. We are working uh, with San Juan de Deo. Uh, now the hospital has, uh, has um, 5G coverage, and we develop, for example, the car of Hyundai Har. I am <laughs> very excited to idea to connect this car to the 5G network, for example, and make possible that the doctor do don't run back the car, if not from remote uh, control, for example. This is possible with the 5G technology. This is not possible with Bluetooth, for example. That is the technology, I think, that uh, use the car, for example. Okay? We need to provide this uh, new type of uh, 5G networks and 5G uh, technology to improve the current services. Technological drivers for the introduction of the 5G in the health sector. The new generation of the medical IoT devices. We'll see come as in the next years the operation of the new medical IoT devices using, for example, video in high quality, okay? uh, pro providing, uh, providing um, doctors and uh, in general people of the world with the, mo with the, uh, the best uh, experience uh, in the use of, of these devices. Wearables. We'll see, we'll see in the next years the apparition of wearables, wearables that uh, can uh, collect information about the patient, that can send real-time information, and they can receive, okay, and the patient uh, could receive also information. Critical services. With a slicing, we, 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 we will um, provide uh, uh, security for the critical services and emergencies. That is uh, another uh, driver. And at the end, the robotics, the introduction of the robotics, for example, for the surgery operations. Um, 
there are a lot of uh, studies and there are lots of reports uh, talking about the, the impact of the 5G networks in the health sector. These are um, some numbers related to a study from at and And it's clear that uh, this uh, technology can change the way to, to develop new technological solutions that can help to the health sectors. The immediate future, the immediate future is uh, to get collaborative medical services, expanding the possibilities of 5G to improve actual uh, service, actual technologies like I say to the car, for example, or all or another examples that uh, you have seen in the session. Improving accident car services is more important. 5G could see a, a good solution to to the services, introducing the robotics and collaborative diagnostics, remote personalized social assistance. For the social assistance, also we are working, for example, on, with Barcelona City Council in these solutions. And of course, the dream of Xavi, that is the global uh, connected hospital. Thank you, Xavi. Xavi is from my team. It's a dream team for me, Xavi. And he's also dream with the global connected hospitals, hospitals connected in real time, sharing services, sharing doctors, and sharing knowledge. Thank you so much, Begonia. Thank you so much. If you want, you have some questions, no, Begonia? Thank you so much. OK. <laughs> Mm -hmm. One of my questions to you is, let's say if somebody has a defibrillator and you are monitoring that defibrillator mm -hmm. basically remotely, yeah. what are the concerns regarding the cybersecurity? Yes. If somebody basically can access that defibrillator, mm -hmm. or when somebody is doing robotic surgery, mm -hmm. you're going to have a problem. Have you thought about this? Yes, this is... Thank you for your question. This is, a, this is the question. How secure is uh, the slice? But uh, we have with 5G and, and the new generation of networks the possibility to divide with the slicing and to create virtual private networks using new, new ways to secure uh, these communications, for example, using quantum computing. The, quanti the developing of the quantum computing in the next years uh, combining with the possibilities of these networks uh, allow us to increase the security of these slides. The security uh, the 10% is, is impossible in all the camps, but we have tools, very good tools, to improve the security. Now we are in, the, in a previous version of 5G. In the two next uh, years, we will develop the, the, the standard, the 3G, uh, 3G PP standard, and it includes new possibilities to securize. This is a, a very, yes. <laughs> Some question? No? I, I, think that, I think that we are out of time, <laughs> but only mention one important thing uh, for us, and I think no, that this is, for me, the most important home take uh, message for all of you that patients and families are in the heart of uh, our pediatric hospital. And we try to do our best with the different examples to explain this. And second, if you have interest to contact us and to learn or you know, share experience, you can find us you know, on our uh, website or on our social media. It has been a pleasure to share uh, this first part of this morning with all of you. And thank you also to the organization for the invitation to, to share our experiences. Thank you so much.